Hi there. This is a video uh, to talk about the 360 Splat Prep Tool uh, version 1.7. So to run the software, you have two options. You can just double click the EXE. Uh, you can move this folder wherever you like. And there's also a debug mode, uh, which writes out to a log file. In case you want to report any issues, that's super useful for helping figure out what's going on. Uh, in the meantime, you can just run 1.7. And very similar to 1.6 in terms of sizes, um, but we've added two kind of major features. One is batch processing, uh, which can work on single videos and multiple videos. And I've also added the ability to export the masks separately and uh, create subfolders per tile position, uh, as well as a few UI cleanup, stuff like that. So the purpose of the software is basically to take a lat long video or equilateral video uh, like this one and we can then extract that to frames we can add masks onto it we can add manual masks and then we can split that out with overlapping frames for photogrammetry software to do alignment on this so i'm going to run through not through the deep workflow but just go through new features that have been added into this version uh, so you can have an understand it so uh, you can drag a video on. Now, nothing will be visible for the preview until you extract some frames. When you first drag it on, um, you have two methods to extract frames. You can do them every one frame, every one second, or one frame every 30 frames. Um, depending if you're using slow-mo or something like that. I tend to just use time and then split it over one second. When you drag a video on, it will automatically set it to the max number of frames. You can reduce this. So I could say, I just want to test five frames to extract. And then if I click add max frames, it goes back to the uh, total amount that you'd get for that duration. So if I set this back to five uh, and then do extract frames, when you do extract frames, it's going to take the name of the video, create a folder and do an underscore frames to it. And you can see this has loaded up the five test frames that we've set to output. Double click on these, you can step through. And you would change that duration depending on how many camera clusters and how close you want them together. Shorter duration, if you're just walking, obviously those clusters will be closer and you'll get more detail resolution for your capture. So uh, once we've done this, um, we can extract segmentation masks. If I just click on this, uh, this is set to the smallest model, the lowest confidence, uh, expands the mask a little bit, and the detection uh, basically is whether it down reses the images. So standard, it is using a down res, and enhanced using multiple passes at different confidence, that kind of thing. I added in an export mask separately here. So if you turn this on, um, what this will do is create either a folder or put the frames in here with a mask exported separately. Um, I tend to have it off for AI masking because when I step through the frames, I'll see whether a mask has come on here. Because it's embedded in the image, it's loading that image up. If it's separated, it isn't loading it up. So just as a sort of feature, I find that works a little bit better. Um, now I can, just hit batch process all steps. If I know what these uh, settings are going to be, so I could do axe mad frames, just hit go, and then it will process through all of this. If I don't want to include the AI masking, I can just uncheck batch process AI masks there. Uh, that works really well. So just running this now, if I do batch process all the steps, it's going to extract images again, um, assuming that you may have changed that. So you can see the folder immediately gets deleted what the contents do because I've got this clear output folder before extraction checked on. Um, tend to have used GPU acceleration on. The extraction's a bit quicker. Now, it's not what it's, so I've got my five frames. Then it's going to create another folder with underscore split after it. And you can see those split frames uh, have been added in here. Now, what I can do is I could create subfolders for tile position if I wanted to. Um, so if I run that now, you can see each row and column is going to get its own folder. And then that camera position is outputted to just that same folder. So that can be useful. Uh, a person was requesting it for coal map use. Um, so we can do that. Uh, we can also add on manual masking. 
um, before we do the splitting. So if I turn on the bottom mask and expand that up, you can see that's then gonna go over me throughout the duration of this. So sometimes manual masks work great if the camera's just above you. There's also a vertical mask, uh, so we can set that. Let's just uh, move it up a bit. So you can see that mask is basically just a cube that can be resized and shaped however you want. You can set it for the sky, whatever you would like to do. So in this case, I'm going to turn that off. Now I'm going to turn off subfolders. Just make sure I'm up here because you'll get errors if it's trying to remove those folders. I'll run this again. So now I've got the bottom mask on. Um, I'm not splitting them separately. So the mask will be embedded in the split files. So you can see it's now got this circular mask over me. Because the AI masking is not trained on distorted images, it can be difficult for it to um, select you properly. If, if it's held out in front, it's much more successful because it's got a better version of uh, you to select. Whereas this sort of dis distorted version underneath the camera often doesn't get picked up. So that's why we've got manual masks in there as well. So we can now split masks separately as well. So you can just turn this on. Um, there's presets in here, but we also got custom as well. So if I go to custom, you see activate settings. I can turn this on. Um, I can pick a reality scan software preset if I want to, and then modify it here as well. Um, these are guesses from doing research. If you've got better settings, you feel the preset needs to use, please leave a comment and I'll make sure that gets changed. Um, so for the moment, I'm just going to switch this to cold map. That gives me a mask subfolder and the frames there just because it's easier to read. So if I do split all images now, you'll see there's now a masks folder because we've got that down here. Um, and I'll just refresh that a bit more. Yep. So all the images are added in here and then there's our mask files. So only the images that have a portion of mask in there that is in that particular split will get the image put in. So that's a quick rundown of how to do um, the exporting. If you have AI masks and manual masks, it will merge them together. They're not outputted separately. It's just one single mask file that matches. So say we're using reality scan and I split all the frames here. Rather than put this into a subfolder, you'll see it merges them all together and it's got the same file name and a dot mask at the end of it. Um, so this can just be dropped into reality capture. Uh, and then it will use those masks and they'll automatically get picked up uh, once using the software. So talk a little bit about batch mode, uh, just because that's been a really good time saver. We just go up to our demo files. So if I grab two videos, drop them on, it now shows we're in a batch mode. Obviously you can't preview this because there's two different video streams to preview. Um, but what I've also done is change this. So if I just add one video on, you'll see the UI's got our max frames. But if I had two or three or four, I can put those on and you see it's now got four videos. So what I can do is in, at the moment, if I just do extract frames, it's going to go through every video, extract every frame, every second until it runs out of time, basically on that video. So you'll get differing amounts. If you wanted to do a test export, I've done a limit in here. So I can say, actually, I just want five frames per video. Uh, to have a look at, or I could do 50, you know, whatever you want. It just means it's a good way of being able to test multiple videos. So what I've done is I can just hit process all steps and it will run through using these current settings on both videos. I can, you can also just extract frames. So if I run this, this is going to batch extract the frames only. And this can be quite useful where you just want to look at the, the frames within the tool. Um, and you can see it's stepping through each video, the path will change here. Uh, and it's back to batch extracting the frames. And you can see down here, all these underscore frames folders uh, are being released there. Be very careful about disk space. Can't make guarantees this is going to be accurate in terms of what this output size is going to be or anything like that. So if I then did batch process all steps, it's going to output everything. I haven't got AI masks on here, so it's going to ignore that. Uh, so that should work fine. Um, and then you can see if I took one of these videos, uh, so we just grab this edge case one, dropped them in. 
Uh, that's interesting. Did that fail? Edge case. Oh, maybe I didn't have that one selected. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Let's just grab these three. Let's see if this works in case there's a problem on that video. So once I've dropped them in, it's kind of gone to this max frame, but we're going to just set this back up to five. Hit extract frames again. I'm just going to double check raising. Uh, sorry, the edge case one got picked up. Yeah, okay, we're there. Yeah, there's our five frames. So you, as I said, you can extract them, but you won't get a, a preview. What you can now do though, is say we grab this one, drop it on. It now loads up the video frames that have been extracted. So it's another quick way of exporting lots of frames. Um, and those are five frames. So I could drag these two, drop them on. Um, and then if I lower this, just cause it's a little bit slower, uh, I know I'm going to do standard. So I'm going to do 55 overlap, uh, with the bottom mask on 12%. Um, I'm going to switch it to cold map. So I get mask a separate folder and then just do split all images. And that should go through. Okay. Yeah. So splitting doesn't work in the batch mode, but process batch process all steps will. So if I hit this, um, that should run through. Yeah. It will do the extraction and then it will do the splitting. This should update in terms of what it's actually doing, uh, for the software release, but yeah, any issues, uh, any problems you find, you can see I'm now getting both of those frames and then it's doing the splitting out here. I've got the masks there separately and then all the frames are being outputted into there. Um, Hopefully this will be a big speed up for your workflow and will allow you to process a lot more data through and we have previously. Again, please leave any comments in the comments section on YouTube or drop me a mail uh, from your purchase email from Gumroad uh, with any suggestions or bugs or anything like that. Uh, it's really great to hear from users and how they're getting on with the software um, and any issues they might be having. Just let me know and I'll endeavor to fix things. Next things in terms of roadmap, I would say is probably AI masking and revamping all of that. I think there are faster options out there, um, but also let me know in the comments if there's anything you really want to see that's holding you back from using the tool. Thanks very much.